first Lord, how you doing? I was coming from level Revelation chapter two. And we were talking about the church of Ephesus. But I'm gonna finish reading from now. Nevertheless, John is verse four. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember thou for from when thou fallest, and repent, and do thy first work over, else I will come quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. A lot of us have walked away from our first love. A lot of us have walked away from God. I don't know what situation happened in your life or what took place that caused you to deny Christ. I don't know what situation that became so heavy on your heart where you just tied in your mind that you no longer could, could no longer hold on to him, no longer could embrace him. But so he said that no man can remove you or take you away. How many times have we allowed so many distractions? How many times have we allowed so much things in this life to distract us and to cause us to separate from the very one who loved us? The very one who gave us life, the very one who gave us hope, gave us life, gave us a new beginning, a new direction. And even though, and even though there's some of you right now who don't know him, you heard of him, you heard preachers preach about him, but you never had a personal relationship with him. But after the night, you can have a relationship with him, and you can experience his love and his joy and his peace and happiness like you never experienced before. And you can receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And you can know him according to the word of God. But the Bible says, and I know I said this scripture before, but I'm going to say it again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, but behold, all things become new. See, when you receive Jesus Christ in your life, everything becomes brand new in your life. Things become different. Things are no longer the same like it used to be in your life. You begin to find yourself walking a new walk, talking a new talk. You begin to find yourself experiencing joy, find yourself experiencing different things that you never thought you would ever experience in your life. But one thing you, you, that you will know is you find yourself feeling more happier, more lighter. You'll be finding yourself even prospering even more. You'll find even that sin that has held you down for so long, that sin will begin to fade away out of your life. See when you've been when you've been when you've been when you've been washed in the blood, he washed away all your sins, all your impurities, every polluted blood, every little thing that has con contaminated your spirit, your mind, your heart. God began to remove all that out of the way through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will be applied in your life. The blood of Jesus will cover you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? But I tell you what the man see. That's one of the main focal points of the church. And that is evangelism. Going out and evangelizing the nation, the world, the community. Even telling our family and friends about the love of Jesus. Let them know that Jesus died for their sin. And that Jesus gave his very life to them as well. See, Jesus has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God is not happy to see those to die. He don't he's not happy with those who die without him. He is not proud to see the wicked die without knowing Christ. He's not happy to see the wicked die in their sins and they don't repent. God wished that no one passed. He wished that no one lose their life at a young age, at an early age, or too soon. Jesus wished that no one die an immature death. Young person, you might be watching this. 
I want you to know Jesus loves you. And I do too. And I will be praying for you in my prayer life. Yeah, you may be gay, you may be lesbian, you may be homosexual. Okay. Even though in even though the Bible condone even though the Bible do not condone that lifestyle. And we know that lifestyle is not of God. And we know that, that lifestyle is of the devil. And we know that the enemy has deceived a lot of young men and women having them thinking they was born that way when they wasn't born that way. When the enemy has gotten into their life and contaminated their life at a very young age. It may be through child molestation. It may be through somebody in your family touching you the wrong way. Or somebody speaking to your ears and telling you what you are when you know you're not. Whatever the case might be, but God loves you too, and He loves you enough to even die for you, you as well. He died on the cross for you as well. Put away the lifestyle, y'all. Put away the sin. And let God come in and love you and embrace you. You know, that man, and that's many, and that's many of us. Who have the gift of God, but not out of repentance. See, some of us may have a gift of preach things, do all the wonderful things. If you have not repented, what good does it do you? And I know I'm supposed to be talking about quit hiding in church and let your light shine. And see, that's why the church, we must let our light shine. That this world can begin to experience hope again. That they begin to believe again. That they begin begin to love God again. That they be able to start seeking God's faith. We are the only hope that this world will ever see. We're the only Jesus that they will see in this lifetime. If we have this hope and we have Jesus inside our life and living for Him, then we ought to let our light shine before them. We need to let them see that there's a better life. That's a better way to live. A better way of doing things. A better way of conducting business. We need to let them know that we love them, that we're willing to embrace them and bring them into our, into our family and welcome them into our presence. But like I say, church people, we are so busy trying to make money, we're so busy trying to be popular and try to get a position that Jesus don't even have first place in our lives anymore. How can this world really be one of Christ if we're so busy acting more like them and sinning like them and we out there hypocriting, being fake, not real. But guess what? This way God going to judge them, God's going to judge you too. But when you stand before that gate, what 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 do you think God's going to say? We don't know to tell, we don't know to preach this no more. But church, we're required to live holy every day we are required to live righteous every day we are required to be sanctified and set apart from the things that's not of God we are required to pray and read our Bibles and meditate upon it daily day in and day in night. we are also required to do the work of God do the work of evangelism evangelizing our community for Christ we are required to do the right thing in God's eyesight. We are required to do so. But why is that we spend so much time trying to live these different lifestyles, trying to be somebody else, trying to be something we're not, trying to have all this popularity and all this fame, be the next big thing? We try to be a, try to be up on our high horse, and we start looking down on other folks when we were once in our lowest state. Before we even got where we're at. But sometimes we have a tendency to forget who we really are. And sometimes you have a tendency to forget where God brought you from. And I'm going to come back with you with part four of this video. Quit hiding, church. And let your light shine. Let the world know who you are. God bless.